Hi, this is Mr. Tipton, and we are back today with transversal equations. In the last video, we talked about all of the different relationships that are formed, different, different angle relationships that are formed when a transversal intersects parallel lines. Today, we're going to use those relationships to solve equations. So let's get going. First, we have angle 3 and angle 7. What we need to do is figure out what kind of relationship these two angles have. They're both in the lower right section of their group of four. That tells us that they are corresponding angles. And hopefully we remember that corresponding angles are congruent. So what that means is angle three is congruent, which is just the geometry word for equal, to angle 7. Angle 3 is 40 degrees and angle 7 is 3x plus 19. Save the term with the variable for last, so undo by subtracting 19 from both sides and we get 21 is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3 and we're able to solve and get x is equal to 7. The solving is no different than it has been. We're just getting our equations from our angle relationships. Let's look at another. Angle 6 and angle 7. These are right next to each other. They're adjacent and they're along the same straight line which means that these are supplementary. Supplementary angles have a sum of 180 degrees. The measure of angle 6 plus the measure of angle 7 is going to equal 180 degrees. Angle 6 is 6x minus 25 and angle 7 is 2x plus 13. Combine our like terms. We have 6x's and 2x's. That gives us 8x's. And we also have a negative 25 and a positive 13, which is negative 12. Save the term with the variable for last. Add 12 to both sides and we get 8x is equal to 192. Divide both sides by 8 and we get x is equal to 24. It's all about knowing what those what the relationships are between the two angles. In this problem we've got angle 3 and angle 8 these are consecutive interior angles, which means they are supplementary, which means they have a sum of 180 degrees. Measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 8 is going to equal 180 degrees. Angle 3 is 5x, and angle 8 is 2x minus 2 as a sum of 180. Combine our like terms and we get 7x minus 2 is equal to 180. Add 2 to both sides and we get 7x is equal to 182. Divide both sides by 7 and we end up with a solution of x is equal to 26. One more together. Here we have angle 3 and angle 5. Angle 3 and angle 5 are alternate interior angles. Alternate because they're on all um, opposite sides of the transversal. Interior because they're inside the parallel lines. And we know that alternate interior angles are congruent. So the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 5. 
And this one looks kind of ugly. Uh, that's okay. Let's just jump in. Angle 3 is 1 plus 3 times the quantity of x minus 12. And angle 5 is 4 times the quantity of 2x plus 30. We're going to simplify each side before we do anything to both sides. So on the right, we've got 1 plus 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 12 is negative 36, and 1 combined with negative 36 gives us 3x minus 35. On the right side, 4 times 2x is 8x, and 4 times 30 is 120. I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down to the next line. Alright, now that each side is simplified, we're ready to do things to both sides. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides, get my x's together first. On the left, I now have negative 35, and on the right, I have 5x plus 120. Subtract 120 from both sides, and now have negative 155 is equal to 5x, and divide both sides by 5. I end up with a solution of x is equal to negative 31. So kind of a, a long, ugly equation, but it all comes from the relationship between the two angles. Angle 3 and angle 5 were alternate interior, and we know they're congruent, so it just means that they're equal to each other. If you have questions about transversal equations, write them down. Be ready to talk about them in class. We'll see you soon.